Remember that we emphasized two sides of Jesus' uh, personality. Danas je jedna strana naglašena previše na štetu one druge strane. Today we will emphasize one of the sides uh, at expense of the other. Verski svet danas uglavnom naglašava Isusa koji je fini, koji je knez mira, koji je blag, koji leči, isceljuje i pokazuje svoju dobrotu. Religious world today is presenting Jesus who is kind, loving, uh, helpful uh, and shows his goodness. Međutim, Isusova ličnost kao onoga koji objavljuje istinu je i da je pravedan i neustrašiv. However, Jesus' personality as one who is uh, proclaiming the truth also contains uh, uh, attitude of being very courage, courageous. A nažalost, danas se ova druga strana Isusove ličnosti zapostavlja. Unfortunately, this other side of his personality we will not focus on. Ako imamo na umu onu prvu stranu, onda ne možemo da ne volimo Isusa, da mu se ne divimo. If we uh, think about his uh, one side, then we cannot admire, but admire him. Ali ako imamo ovu drugu stranu na umu, onda ne možemo, a da ga ne respektujemo. But if uh, we think about his other side, uh, that he is courageous, then we cannot but respect him for truth. Za vreme od tri i po godine primećujemo da je postojala grupa ljudi koja sa Isusom nije bila u dobrom odnosu. For the period of three and a half years we realized that there was a group of people that did not have a very good relationship to Jesus. Oni su kritikovali Isusa. They criticized him. Oni su ga ismejavali. They ridiculed him. Oni su mu se protivili. They uh, opposed him. Oni su ga špionirali. They uh, spied on him. I oni su mu na čak na kraju krajeva i radili o glavi. And in the end uh, they acted against his life. Veoma je mali broj onih iz ove grupe s kojima je Isus imao dobre odnose. There's a very little group of those that have a, had a good relationship with him. Ja ću vam sad spomenuti neke od njih. I'm going to mention to you a few of them. U Kapernaumu je bio starešina sinagoge po imenu Jair. In Kapernaum, uh, the director of synagogue uh, with the name Jair. Jair je sigurno pripadao ovoj klasi verskih lidera i vođa s kojima Isus nije imao tako dobar odnos. He probably belonged to the group of uh, people that did not have the best relationship to Jesus. Ali on je od Isusa zatražio pomoć da isceli njegovu kćer i ja verujem da je ovo jedan od redki koji sa Isusom imao dobar odnos. But he asked Jesus to help and heal his daughter and uh, believe that uh, he is one of the few that uh, contacted Jesus. Zatim imamo onog bogatog mladića koji je bio stručnjak za zakone za Toru za jevrejsku religiju. Then we have a rich uh, young ruler who was very uh, privy to laws in the country. Jedan od redkih s kojim Isus imao dobre odnose. Uh, he is uh, belonging to very few of those that Jesus had a good relationship with. I ne to. samo to, nego evangelist Marko kaže da Isus voleo ovog mladog čoveka. Not only that, but uh, evangelist Marcus tells us that Jesus loved this young man. I kad je taj odlučio da ipak Ne ide za Isusom, Isusu je bilo veoma žal. And when this man decided not to go with Jesus, Jesus was sad. Evangelist Luka opisuje bar tri puta da Isus bio u kući fariseja i da je jeo u njihovoj kući. Evangelist Luke tells us that Jesus was at least at three, in three occasions in homes of uh, the Pharisees and that he was eating with them. Josip iz Arimateje je Isusu posudio svoj grob. A Josip iz Arimate je sigurno bio jedan od onih koji je zauzimao visoko mesto u jevrijskom, verskom i uh, političkom sistemu. Joseph from Arimatea was one of the very influential and rich people that certainly belonged to that uh, high class and he belonged to Jesus' friends. I onda imamo našeg Nikodima. And then we have our Nicodemus. I on je tema za našu današnju propovedu. And he is uh, the subject of our study today. On nam je poznat po tome što je imao taj ponoćni intervju sa Isusom. He is known to us uh, by this uh, nightly interview with Jesus. U stvari Isusov razgovor sa Nikodimom je najduži zapisani razgovor koji Isus vodio sa jednom osobom uopšte. Actually the report about this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus is the longest written report about any of the communications that Jesus had with a single individual. Bio je to 
ponočni intervju u kojem se nalaze veoma jake poruke za Isusovu decu danas. This was a midnight interview with very strong messages even for us today. Kada je Isus razgovarao s Nikodimom? When did Jesus talk to Nikodemus? Noću. At night. Ali u kojem periodu Isusove službe na ovoj zemlji? In which uh, time of his uh, ministry on this earth did it happen? Verovatno na samom kraju Isusove službe. We, pres we presume that this was at the very beginning of uh, Christ's ministry. This was uh, that week when Jesus, in a very strong way, demonstrated uh, his opposition to the way how Pharisees were using uh, the fore front part of the of the uh, God of the temple. Tu je Isus koji je blag i koji je miran i krotak, a u ruci drži uh, bič kojim uh, rasteruje trgovce u predvorju hrana. Here is Jesus that is uh, kind and, and uh, very, very nice looking, but he has a whip in his hand, and with this whip he is driving out all this, uh, uh, all this uh, merchants out of uh, the temple. Isus je znao da hrabro stane za istinu. Jesus knew to stand up very assertively for the truth. And we should not neglect uh, this part of Jesus. This uh, sight of Jesus we should respect. It is sure that this Jesus' intervention in the temple created very strong tensions among the Pharisees. Who is this man that uh, dares to in interfere with the uh, temple's procedures? In the end, the temple had their own uh, uh, policy, uh, Policemen that were supposed to take care of the of the order. I policija za jevrejski hram je uglavnom bila registrovana iz redova sadukeja koji su upravljali političkim životom Izraela. And the policemen at that time were from the sex fraction of Sadducees that were in that day. A sikal koji se sakuplja u hramu je bio veoma važan za život hrama. Um, it was very important uh, the collections that they had for the life of the temple. I očigledno da Nikodim dolazi kod Isusa da razgovara s njim ove noći nakon ove napetosti koja je nastala među Izraelcima u odnosu na Isusa. And now we have Nicodemus coming to Jesus uh, very few days after this very tense uh, event has happened. Možda je Nikodim želeo da sa Isusom malo porazgovara o tome da se sredi taj problem koji je nastao. Maybe Nicodemus had in mind to, uh, uh, to iron out uh, uh, this uh, uh, problem that uh, Jesus created in the temple. Ali pre nego što će nam evanđelist Jovan govoriti o tom intervju koji je Nikodim imao sa Isusom, imamo vrlo zanimljiv uvod u taj intervju. But before uh, Nicodemus starts, uh, John is giving us very interesting introduction to this interview. And for this occasion, I would I invite all of you that have Bible with you to open it at this time. And here we'll, we're going to find something very interesting that we usually don't find when we are reading about Nicodemus and Jesus. So John, chapter 2. Um, I tu čitamo posljednja uh, dva stiha. And we read here the last two words, verses. Jovan 2, 24 i 25. So John 2, 24 and 25. Naravno, kad je Biblija pisana, onda nije bilo stihova i poglavlja, mi to znamo. Of course, we know that when the Bible was written, there were no separations in the chapters and verses. I kad biste vi sad uzeli tu Bibliju, kakva je bila u originalu, da nema stihova i poglavlja, 
vi jednostavno ne biste osjetili kad ste došli u treće poglavlje i u Isusov razgovor sa Nikodimom. And if you were having the original Bible in front of you, you would not be aware where the transition is between the second and the third chapter when Jesus starts um, acting uh, and uh, um, dealing with Nikodemus. To dakle ide kao jedan celi tekst. So this is a whole text in, in itself. Kao celi događaj. Uh, as a one event. And you see, these two, these two verses in chapter 2 are, are essential part of what is happening in chapter 3. What do we see in the 23rd verse? Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the past over during the feast many believed in his name observing his signs which he was doing but Jesus on his part was not entrusting himself to them for he knew all men okay, you see the situation now many people are believing in Jesus but what is Jesus uh, doing in relation to them Naš prevod kaže Isus im se ne poveravaše. Our translation says that he was not entrusting himself to them. Ali u originalu ovaj tekst zvuči mnogo ozbiljnije. But the, ori- the original text is much more serious. Je reč verovaše u 23. stihu i poveravaše u 24. u grčkom originalu ima jednu istu apsolutno istu reč. Because the word uh, believed in 23rd verse and in trusting in 24th verse in a Greek of one and very same word. And you know which word that is? The word that we're translating in our language uh, as believe. So if we would read the way how original is, so we have the following situation. Some believe in Jesus, but Jesus doesn't believe in them. How do you like that? Do you like to believe to those that believe in Jesus, but uh, know that Jesus is not believing in you? But uh, there were such people at that time. They believed in Jesus. He was making miracles. But Jesus was not believing in their faith. Is it possible that today somebody believes in Jesus? Jesus, but Jesus doesn't believe in his faith? Absolutely, it's possible. You believe in Jesus? But, but your faith is such that Jesus cannot rely on your faith. Today it is possible that there are many Christians who say that they are Christians, but Jesus cannot say that they are his. In the end, the Bible is telling us uh, the time will come when many are going to come to Jesus and say, have we been with you? Um, and we have casted our devils with you and we we are healing people with you and now you're telling us that you don't know us? For me, this text is a very strong provocation. What kind of faith do I have towards Jesus? Is my faith toward Jesus such that he can rely on my faith? Or maybe not? Because there is such a possibility. There are several questions. Is it possible to believe in Jesus but not to have any, any trust in him? Is it possible to believe in Jesus but not to have the saving faith in Jesus? Is it possible to believe in Jesus but not to love him? And the Satan believes too. Somebody is reminding me. So there is a Bible text saying that the devil believes too. Is it 
Isusu i da se ne preda njegovom autoritetu. Is it possible that somebody would believe in Jesus but would not surrender to his authority? Da li je moguće da neko veruje u Isusa da se za svoje spasenje oslanja na sebi i na svoja dela? Is it possible that somebody would believe in Jesus but relies on his and his own works for salvation? Ovo je bio odličan uvod za Isusov intervju sa Nikodimom. This was excellent in introduction for this interview with uh, Nicodemus and Jesus. Izgleda da je Nikodim bio ovakva vrsta Isusovih vernika. Because it looks like Nicodemus belonged to this kind of believers in Jesus. Takvima koji veruju u Isusa, a Isus ne veruje u njih, je nešto potrebno. Those who believe in Jesus but Jesus doesn't trust them, they need something. Za njih bismo mogli da kažemo za ovakvu vrstu vernika da su oni skoro Isusovi vernici. For this kind of believers we could say that they are almost Christ's believers. I sad dopada mi se ta reč u engleskom jeziku, u našem skoro nije kao u engleskom ta reč almost. The language, the word in our language is not the same like almost in English language. Imam jednog jako dobrog prijatelja. I have a very nice friend, very good friend. I ne vidimo se tako često. We don't meet very often. Češće se čujemo nego što se vidimo. More often we hear each other. I naravno, šta je skoro prva reč kad se s nekim čujete? Kako si? And so what is the first word when you talk to somebody? It is how are you doing? I njegov odgovor je uglavnom almost good. And his answer is usually Almost good. Dakle, mogu bi neko da bude skoro Isusov ver. So somebody could be almost Christ's disciple. Šta je s tobom i sa mnom? What is with you and me? Verujemo u Isusa? Are we believing in Jesus? Veoma je mnogo oni koji veruju u Isusa. There are many that believe in Jesus. Ja se bojim da je više oni koji veruju u Isusa nego li oni kojima Isus veruje da veruju u njega. I'm afraid that there are more people that believe in Jesus than those who believe that Jesus believes that they believe in him. Nikodim je dokaz da neko može da bude pozitivan u odnosu na Isusa, ali da ne bude onaj koga Isus veruje. Nikodemus is an example of a person that can believe in Jesus, but it is such that Jesus does not trust him. Neko može da bude kratak u odnosu na pravu veru. Somebody can be very short of the true faith. Skoro, ali ne sasvim. Almost, but not completely. Skoro, ali ne potpuno. Almost, but not completely. Nikodim imao još jedan susret sa Isusom i izgleda da je i taj susret bio noću. Nikodemus had another meeting with Jesus and it looks like also that meeting was at night. Nažalost, to više nije bio intervju. Unfortunately, this was not an interview again. Jer Nikodim sa Isusom nije ovoga puta mogo da razgovara. Because this time, Nikodemus could not talk with Jesus. To je onaj kasni petak u večer kada je Josip iz Arimateje zajedno sa Nikodimom zatraži od Pilata i Sovo telo. This was this late a Friday afternoon when Joseph from Arimateas requested permission to take Christ's body down from the cross. I pokušavam da razmišljam o Nikodimu kako se osjećao te noći. And I'm trying to think, feel, how did Nikodemus feel that night? Josip je dao svoj grob. Joseph from Arimatea gave his grave for for use. A šta je Nikodim dao za Isusa? And what did Nikodemus give for Jesus? Sto litara specijalnog ulja. He gave hundred liters of very precious oil. I onda Josif i Nikodim su te kasne, kasnog petka na večer utapali platno u to ulje i obavijali Isusovo telo. So that late Friday afternoon Joseph from Arimatea and Nicodemus were drenching many linen in this special oil and were wrapping up Jesus in that linen. Ja verujem da se Nikodim sećao prve noći koje je pravio sa Isusom i svega što mu Isus sećao. I believe that Nicodemus was recounting the meeting with Jesus and everything that Jesus told him on that occasion. A šta mu Isus rekao? But what did Jesus tell him? Pogledajte treći pogled. In the third chapter now. Ovaj kaže u drugom stihu, dođe k Isusu noću i reče mu, ravi. So in the second verse here, it says here, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, ravi. 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 
Šta znače ove Nikodimove reči? What is the meaning of this Nikodimus words? Nikodim je majstor kako da vodi razgovor sa onim s kim nema apsolutno slaganje. Nicodemus is a master in leading a conversation with somebody that he is not agreeing 100%. Nicodem je savremeni stručnjak za akademski pristup problemu. Nicodemus is a contemporary specialist in approaching a problem. Kad se sastajete da razgovarate s nekim s kim se ne slažete potpuno šta radite? When you meet with somebody that you don't agree completely with, what do you do? You're trying to find some common denominator. You're trying to find something that you agree, agree upon. The contemporary theologians are confirming that that's how we should act. Imajući zajedničku bazu, zajedničku osnovu. So you may say, I believe this way, you believe this way, well let's meet now and let's talk about something that we both believe in. I Nikodim kaže, hajdemo da startujemo od zajedničkog. And so Nikodemus said, let's start from something that we both believe in. Ja sam Ravi. So I'm Ravi. Ti si Ravi. You're Ravi. Hajde da razgovaramo. Let's talk. Hajde da diskutujemo. Let's discuss. Ovo je recept po kojem danas teolozi rešavaju probleme. This is the pattern or guideline in which the theologians today are resolving conflicts. Recimo jedan teolog baptista i jedan teolog adventista danas će ovako razgovarati. So a theologian from Baptist church and a theologian from Adventist church will resolve their conflicts in such a way. Ja sam ravi, ti si ravi, imamo zajedničku osnovu. So you are a teacher, I'm a teacher, we have a common denominator. Ali pa... Zapazite da kod Isusa nema ovakvog kompromisa na startu. But realize that there is not such a compromising start of this discussion. Kad je trebalo razgovarati o istini, Isusu nije trebalo zajedničko tlo sa Nikodimom. When there was need to discuss the truth, Jesus did not need any common denominator. Which, Kako Isus reaguje? How did Jesus respond? Kako Isus razgovara? How is Jesus talking? Isus ne kaže, da, ajde, to je zajednička tačka od koje polazimo. Jesus is not saying, yes, yeah, that you are teacher and I'm teacher as a beginning point. He is not caring that. Ti si ravi, ja sam ravi, ajde da razgovaramo. To say, well, you're ravi, I'm ravi, let's talk now. Pogledajte tekst. Look now what the text says. Ravi, znamo da si ti učitelj od Boga došao, jer niko ne može čudesa ovi činiti koja ti činiš ako nije Bog s njim. Ravi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these things and signs that you do unless God is with him. O, a Isus ne kaže, o, Nikodime, a ja znam isto tako da si ti učitelj koji imaš svoje mesto u Sinedrionu. And Jesus is not saying, yes, Nikodemus, yes, you're a teacher and you have your desired place in Sinedrin. Kako Isus razgovara kad je reč o istini? How is Jesus talking when there is a talk about truth? Odgovori Isus i reče mu, zaista, zaista ti kažem, ako se ko nanovo ne rodi, ne može videti carstva Božjega. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless... One is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Gledajte tu drugu stranu Isusove ličnosti kao onoga koji objavljuje istinu. You see now this other side of Jesus as one who is proclaiming the truth. Nikodimu se ovo možda nije moglo dopasti. Maybe Nikodimus could not appreciate this too much. Zamislite da je Isus ovako nešto rekao grupi fariseja i knjiženika koji su ga okružavali. Can you imagine what would happen if Jesus would say these words to a group of pharisees that would be around him? Ovdje bi bio problem, ovdje bi bila reakcija, ovdje bi bila pobuna. There would be a big problem, they would really get against him. Isus kaže Nikodimu da se on mora na novo roditi. Jesus is telling Nikodemus very straight and clear that he has to be born again. Ovo je istina o kojoj nema debate. He says this is a truth about which there is no discussion. Ovome ne možemo da razgovaramo. There is a truth about which we cannot talk. Ako se ko na novo ne rodi ne može videti carstva Božja. Unless somebody is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. I onda Nikodim kaže kako se može čovek roditi kad je star. And then Nikodemus said to him how can a man be born when he is old? O kome Nikodim ovde misli i o kome govori kad kaže kako se neko može na novo roditi kad je star? What is Nikodemus thinking when he says here how can he be born again when he is old? Šta mislite? What do you think? 
uopšte o čoveku koji treba da se nanovo rodi, a star je. Just any man that uh, needs to be born again and is old. Apsolutno, sestra Radmila. On, Nikodim ovde misli na sebe. Indeed, Nikodemus is thinking about himself. Znate zašto? You know why? Zato što da bi neko sedeo u Sinedrionu, on mora da bude star. Because that somebody would have to sit in Sinedrion, he has to be old. Mladi ljudi mogu da budu kandidati za Sinedrion. Young people can be candidates for Sinedrion. Ali mladi čovek ne može sedeti u Sinedrion. But Sinedrion cannot accept a young man. Zašto? Why? Zato što je potrebna seda kosa da bi sedeo. Because they have to have white hair. No. 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 Da bi neko sedeo u Sinedronu, treba da nakupi dovoljno kredita da bi sedeo u Sinedronu. So in order to be in Sinedron, he has to accrue enough credits. A zato su potrebne godine. And that requires time, years. I što Nikodim u stvari kaže Isus? So what is Nikodemus telling Jesus? Ja sam nakupio jako mnogo verskih kredita. I have acquired many religious credits. I ja sam ostario držeći zakon. And I have gone old by keeping the law. Ja sam ostario svetkujući subotu. I have gone old by celebrating Sabbath. Ja sam ostario davajući desetak. I have turned old by giving tithe. I ja sam ostario davajući desetak i od najsitnijih stvari. And I'm growing old by giving tithe even from smallest things. Ja treba na novo da se rodim. Do you think I need to get born again? Vidite kako je to ozbiljno pitanje. Let's see how serious this question is. A šta mu onda Isus kaže? What is Jesus telling him? O, izvini, ja ne bi volio da si ti naljutiš. Well, say, Jesus says, I'm sorry, I don't want you to get angry with me. Oprosti, ja sam bio malo previše direkta. Sorry, I was maybe too direct. Ja sam istinu naglašavao na takav način da nisam imao osjećaj za diplomatiju. Maybe I emphasize the truth in such a way that I forgot about diplomacy. Šta kaže Isus? What is Jesus saying? Odgovor Isus u petom stihu, zaista ti kažem, ako se ko ne rodi vodom i duhom, ne može ući u carstvo. And Jesus goes on in the fifth verse saying, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Isus zastupa istinu. Jesus is representing the truth. Isus se bori za istinu. Jesus is fighting for the truth. I... Boreći se za istinu, na kraju bismo mi ljudi kazali da je to platio svojim životom. And fighting for the truth, we could say actually that he paid with his own life. Zanimljivo je da Nikodim na svaki Isusov napad ne odgovara protiv napadom. It is interesting that Nikodemus doesn't react to every to every offensive of Jesus he does not react with a defensive. Isus je to voleo. And Jesus liked that. Isus Napada Nikodima. Jesus is attacking Nikodemus. I Nikodim vrlo mirno prihvata svaki napad. And Nikodemus is very peacefully accepting every attack from Jesus. On postavlja pitanja. He's asking questions. Ali ne ratuje sa Isusom. But he is not fighting a fight with Jesus. On ostaje i dalje da sluša ono što Isus kaže. He is still remaining there to listen to Jesus. I sad bih nešto podelio sa vama. And now I would like to share something with you. To je moj mali pronalazak. This is my little discovery. Nisam izmislio. I did not invent it. Čitao sam i proučavao. I read it and studied about it. Ali hoću da podelim sa vam. But I would like to share it with you. Šta vi mislite, na šta Isus mislio ovde kad je rekao ako se ko ne rodi vodom i duhom ne može ući u Carstvo Bože? What do you think what Jesus had in mind when he said here that unless somebody is born of water and spirit he cannot enter into kingdom of God? Mislim na ovo, rođen vodom. I think about this born with water. Na šta Isus misli? What did Jesus think about? Glasno, ne čujem. I don't hear. Na krštenje? So, do you think about baptism? Na krštenje vode. Neki od vas ste hrabri pa ste kazali, neki vjerovatno mislite. Maybe some of you think about that. Vodom. So, the baptism with water? Mi, mi uglavnom smo mislili i mislimo na naše krštenje vodom. We actually were thinking about our Baptism with water. I postoji jedan problem. And there is a problem with that. Zato što krštenje vodom je samo dovoljno da pokažemo da mi verujemo u Isusa. Because the baptism with water is just one way of showing that we believe in Jesus. I ja mislim da mi prenaglašavamo to što smo se krstili misleći da nas to stavlja u neku prednost u odnosu na druge. And I think our problem is that maybe we 
overemphasized this fact that we were baptized with the water, thinking that this gives us some pri priority towards others. Ja ne želim da pocenim danas u ovoj propovedi vaše i moje krštenje vodom. I do not want to discount our baptism by water today. Ali ne bih voleo da precenim svoje i vaše krštenje vodom. But I would not like to give it too much worth, the Jer baptism by water. To ti ne garantuje da će te Isus, da će Isus u tebe verovati ako si se krstio. Because... This baptism by water is not a guarantee that Jesus is going to believe in you. Jesus u ovom tekstu uopšte nije mislio na krštenje vodom kad je rekao ako se ko ne rodi vodom i duhom. Jesus in this text didn't think about the baptism by water at all. I Nikodim je to tačno znao. And Nikodemus knew that excellent. Jer Isus ovde govori jezikom starog zaveta. Because Jesus is using the language of the Old Testament. A Nikodim je stručnjak za stari zavet. And Nicodemus was the expert of the Old Testament. A šta vam kaže stari zavet? And what is the Old Testament saying? Kad god stari zavet govori o vodi, govori o svetom duhu. Whenever Old Testament is talking about water, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Stari zavet na kraju krajeva i ne poznaje krštenje vodom. So the Old Testament even doesn't know about baptism by water. To je novo zavetna istina. That's true. This is the New Testament's truth. I ja ću vam spomenuti sada samo nekoliko mesta koji to pokazuje. And I will tell you just few verses in the Bible that show that. Na brzinu. Very quickly. Isaija 44. Isaiah 44.3 Šta kaže ovde tekst? What does this text say? Jer ću izliti vodu na žednoga For I will pour out water on the thirsty land I potoke na suhu zemlju And streams on the dry land Ground Izlit ću duh svoj na seme tvoje i blagoslov svoj na tvoje natrave I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants O čemu govori ovde prorok Isaija? What is prophet Isaija talking about? O kakvoj to on vodi govori koji će Bog izliti na Izrael i da će onda oni biti blagosloveni. What kind of water is he talking about that is going to be poured on Israel and that they will be blessed by that water? Ovde nije reč o telesnoj vodi. So this is not talk about the physical water. Ne, ovde nije reč o vodi iz Jordana ili iz Galilejskog jezera. This is not talk about the water from Jordan or any other water. Ovde je reč o svetome duhu. This is the talking about Holy Spirit. Jer sveti duh je jedini koji može da pretvori pustinju u Jordan. Because Holy Spirit is the only one that can turn the desert into the blowing. Kad Jesus nikodim ukazao ako se ne rodiš vodom i duhom nikodim je čuo u stvari pleonazam čuo je dve reči sa istim pojmom jer i voda i duh predstavlja svetoga duha. So nikodim was actually heard two words at the same time because the the water and the spirit mean the very same thing. Jer nikodim je imao uho starog zaveta. Because nikodim was had the ear of the Old Testament. Pogledajte tekst u Jezeki 36. See Jezeki 36. 25 do 27. 25 to 27. Šta kaže prorok Jezeki? I pokropit ću vas vodom čistom i bit ćete čisti. Then I will sprinkle clear water on you and you will be clean. Je vi mislite da ovde prorok govori o običnoj vodi? I think the prophet here is talking about the regular water. Kako može Izrael da bude čist od obične vode? How can Israel be clean with the regular water? Na kraju krajeva šta može meni i tebi da pomogne naše krštenje vodom? Ako nije bilo svetoga duha u tom krštenju. In the end, how can our baptism by water help us if there was no Holy Spirit present? Da li smo se mi krstili vodom zbog toga što verujemo u Isusa? Have you been baptized by the water because we believe in Jesus? Oh da, vi ćete kazati. Oh yes, you will say. Ali da li je to bilo dovoljno da bi Isus verovao u nas? But was that enough that Jesus would trust us or believe in us? Ovde je reč o nekoj drugoj vodi. This is we're talking about some different kind of water. Jer odmah posle toga... Prorok Izekilj kaže, ja ću vas očistiti od svih nečistota vaših i od svih gadnih bogova vaših. Dragi moji, ovo ne može vodom krštenja, ovo ne može obično vodom, ovo može samo svetim duhom. But then he says, you know, that he is going to clean them from all filthiness and from all idols. And the regular water really cannot take care of that. I onda kaže, daću vam novo srce. And then he says, I'm going to give you a new heart. Nažalost, novo srce se ne dobija krštenjem u bazenu. A new heart you don't get when you jump in the... 
I nemojte da ostanete zadovoljni s time što ste kršteni vodom u bazenu. And don't be satisfied by baptism of water in the pool. Voda Svetoga Duha rešava problem, braćo i sestre. The water of the Holy Spirit is one that resolves problems. Kaže da ću vam novo srce, nov ću duh metnuti u vas. I zvanit ću kameno srce iz tela vašega i dat ću vam srce mesno. It says here, um... Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And it's interesting that the New Testament uses the same metaphor of this water. But it talks about, it talks about the water of the Holy Spirit, but not of the water of the baptism. What is Titu 3.5 saying? Kaže Pavle, ne za dela pravedna koja mi učini smo, nego po svojoj milosti spase nas i koja onda reč stoji. Aha. Karadžić je prebao banjom prerođenja i obnovljenjem duha svetoga. So he is saying here that... Titu 3.5. Titus 3.5, okay, 3.5. Ovde vidite tačno ono isto što Isus rekao Nikodimu. Ako se ko nanovo ne rodi kako? Vodom i duhom, a ovde kaže banjom prerođenja i obnovljenjem duha svetoga. Karadžit kaže banjom, verujem da u drugim prevodima stoji voda. Yeah, he says he saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness but according to his Mercy by this washing in regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out upon richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Dakle, voda o kojoj govori stari i novi zavet nije obična voda kojom se mi krštavamo, nego voda koja je u stvari sinonim za svetoga duha kojim se mi krštavamo. The water that we are baptized baptized is not the same water that the spirit the Jesus is talking here about, and the New Testament talks about the water of the Holy Spirit. I u Efesima 5, 26, apostol Pavle koristi isto tu sliku vode. We find the same picture in Ephesians 5, 26, the same picture of water. Šta kaže za crkvu svoju? What does it say for his church? Da je osveti očistivši je kupanjem, koja reč stoji? What word is he using say? So that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word. Jesus says to Nicodemus, you have to start from scratch. And he's telling us today, you have to start from scratch. But Jesus, I have been baptized 50 years ago. Well, Jesus says, you have to start on again. You have to be baptized with the water of the Holy Spirit. But I am all many years member of the church. But Jesus says there is no other solution but complete renewing. And then I say, then we say, you know, Jesus, what do you do about my membership in your church? I'm, I have been a member of your church for many years. And Jesus would say, you know, I'm not excusing uh, uh, what I'm saying, but you have to be born again. The solution is not baptism by the water, dear brothers and sisters. The solution is baptism by the Holy Spirit. This is the only way how we can start again. This is the only way how the old man can be born again. I u Jevrejima poslanici u desetom poglavlju u dvadeset drugom stihu apsolutno isti takav tekst. Deset, dvadeset i dva. Deset, dvadeset i dva. Deset, dvadeset i dva. Da pristupimo s istinitim srcem u punoj veri, očišćeni u srcima od zle savisti i čak kaže umiveni po telu vodom čistom. Ovo nije reč o običnoj fizičkoj vodi krštenja, ovo je reč o svetome duhu. It says here, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And this water is not the physical water, but the water of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, 
Arabia. This is more than an interview of two teachers. This is a conflict of two philosophies. Of Filosofije farisejstva i licemerja i dobrih dela. The philosophy of the Pharisees and uh, double-mindedness and good works. I filozofije Isusove o rođenju svetim duhom. And the philosophy of Jesus uh, with the baptism through the Holy Spirit. Kad bismo imali vremena da idemo dalje kroz Jovan 3, videli bismo da svaki put Isus oštro napada a Nikodim ostaje na nogama i ostaje u razgovoru. And if we had time to go on, we would see that Jesus is continuing to deliver very strong attacks and uh, Nikodemus is just taking it in and stays there to listen. Nikodim je na nogama i ne odustaje, ne odlazi, ali očeja ni kaže kako to može biti. Nikodemus is uh, still standing on his feet uh, thinking about boxers in the ring. He's still on his feet, you know, and he is not giving up. But he is this desperate and he says, you know, well, how can this be? Is it possible that there is nothing good in me? What is Jesus saying? Jesus says, you don't know and you don't understand. To say something like this to a highly educated man, as somebody who is a member of Sanhedrin, that he doesn't understand, to je, to je this is a horrible thing. To je, to je it's a very difficult thing. This is a very dangerous thing. Can you imagine if you would tell a doctor of theolo theology today that he has to be born again? And if you would tell him, don't you know that? You would have a problem. You don't respect the way how people discuss. Not only did Jesus told him that he does not know, but he says that he is physical, that he is carnal. How do you like that? And then in the 12th says, says Nicodemus, you don't believe if I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? He says, Nicodemus, uh, I'm sorry, but that what you believe is not enough for me to believe in you. And then Jesus told him another very difficult thing. And then he says, you remember Moses and the Israelites? Israelites complained and then the snakes came and they were dying from snake bites. And then Moses lifted up snake in the desert. So also the son of man has to be lifted. What is the language of the Old Testament? Those are difficult words. You know why? Because every Pharisee and every member of Sanhedrin, including the Kodemus, he was seeing himself as one who is sitting on Moses' seat. Do you remember that? Jesus told him, you are sitting on Moses' chair. What is Jesus telling Nicodemus? Nicodemus. You have to get down from Moses' seat. You have to sit on what, which chair? Oh, on the chair of the regular sinful and uh, uh, sinful man. Because? Because Israelites had problems. Unless they looked up and Believed. Where is your and my place? If we believe that we are sitting on Moses' seat, very often, depending what we do in a church, we believe that we are maybe sitting on Moses' seat. But Jesus says every contemporary man today in the church that his place is in the place of regular 
man, sinful man. And this night, Jesus did a great thing with Nicodemus. He told him that he has to get down from Moses' seat. And he has to go and sit down on the seat of a simple, sinful man. In order to be saved, and may God help us uh, to get out of that Moses seat. Because this is not our seat. Our seat is a seat of a simple, um, simple man. And our only solution is the water of the Holy Spirit to start from beginning. You see how Jesus defends the truth. In order to be Jesus' children, we have to defend the truth, and this requires from us a little bit more than just being polite. We have to fight for truth. May God help us to receive Jesus' message and to start from beginning. Amen. Amen. Znači da ne zidamo svoju sigurnost u crkvu kojoj pripadamo nego na Hrista, to je pesma broj 241.